Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Memorial is set for former Portland Parks Chief. Family members of former Portland Commissioner and Parks Bureau Director Charles Jordan have scheduled a public memorial for him Saturday. Jordan, the first African-American elected to the city council, died April the 4th at 77. He had Alzheimer's disease. Dion Jordan, his son and a member of the Portland Parks Board, said the family will hold a memorial at Bethel AME Church at 11 a.m. on Saturday. The service is open to the public, i.e. similar name, Anna Griffin. Folks, I had to I had to start off. This is Sunday, by the way. This is Sunday. This is not Saturday. This was taken out of the Oregonian, the Sunday Oregonian, the Sunday Oregonian, the day, uh, the, the day after the memorial. So the memorial has already been. Again, uh, this is the Oregonian. I mean, it just shows the, the the sensitivity, or if not that, the the acknowledgement, if you will, of an icon here in the state of Oregon, as far as its parks are concerned. So I just thought I wanted, I just like to remind, and you remember this is the same Anna Griffith, if you will, in, the, in those last two articles when they announced the fact that he had, he had passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not even mention the, uh, the anniversary of the, of the Pioneer Square. They had two articles side by side, and she'd written both of those articles and um, uh, did not mention the fact that, that uh, uh, Commissioner Jordan had anything to do with Pioneer Square. Mm -hmm. And also in his uh, so-called piece talking about who he was, uh, there was no mention about the fact that the man was also a military person. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of other goodies. So, so that's what we're going to do today. We, we're going to actually, again, set, this, set the record straight and uh, talk to people who were here before. We were talking about, uh, about Charles, Commissioner Charles Jordan, and we're going to do it again. Maybe it'll help, help folks out. We want to make right. sure we correct the thing. But again, uh, I take exception, and hopefully the Oregonian will, will get themselves together in regards to what's going on. Okay. Well, with me today, uh, again, is Donnie there and, and uh, Ken Berry, and, and also we got John. John Sweeney. I like that. I want to make sure he made his announcement. That. <laughs> we got John, John with today. And by the way, I want to thank John for giving us the opportunity to do the show because we had something else planned, but this was very, very important about this announcement on the, on the wrong day. So to, to the public, please understand there's not a memorial at Bethlehem e today. Uh, yes, today. It was yesterday. yesterday. It was yesterday. And so we want to make sure. So, so we're going to have a somewhat of a memorial mm -hmm. since, you, since, you, since you missed it. But there'll be, but there will be another memorial? observance, yes, at the Charles Jordan Center okay. in North Portland on May 17th. Okay. And where is that located, by the way? Just it's uh, in University Park. University there. Park. Uh, uh, and you can get it through Parks and Recreation. Okay, good. And it's the Charles Jordan Community Center. Call the center for more details on the time. But it is May seventeenth. Okay, so. fine. So let's talk about this. Let's, let's, let's again. Let's let's talk about the uh, the Charles Jordan aspect of it. If you notice, you got the photo. We 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 spent some time again for the benefit of the viewing audience. Let's talk about Charles for a minute. Well, Charles is a man who uh, really um, influenced so many people. Just a few minutes ago, I happened to run into Thera Memory. And Thera Memory is now going to receive his doctorate from uh, Boston. A school of music, uh, Berkeley School of Music in Boston. And thanks to Charles Jordan, he's the one back about 1969 who um, supported the um, cultural recreation band, which their memory uh, was directing Ronnie Harrison and also Greg McKelvey has now turned to the, to the American music program. Those students, he's still teaching after all those years, mm -hmm. thanks to Charles Jordan setting the roots or setting the feed or the seeds for him to be able to do that. That was through World Arts Foundation Incorporated. But uh, Charles Jordan did so much in this community. I, I was also appointed by him to be part of the uh, first Pioneer Square events committee 
um, um, a member. And I, I remember years ago, I, I, I tried to tell myself, just like I tell myself now, I need to slow down and <laughs> not do quite as much. But Charles Jordan, no, he said, no, you're going to be active. He kept Michael Grimes busy. He kept me busy making sure that we were involved in the arts. And so with, with the help of Charles Jordan, he made sure that, that students, such as the Cultural Recreation Band, had instruments in their hands instead of guns and all those other things. Mm -hmm. We made sure that uh, uh, we, we kept the program going until they developed their own 501c3 and became their own independent uh, um, um, pr program. But at any rate, Charles Jordan was a tremendous inspiration to the city. Um, he not only was very active at his church, I had the pleasure of many, many, many years ago, he asked me to come and work with this men's group. Yes, and right. people like Ed Mitchell and yes. my uncle Harold, William Woods, and, and folks, we, and just, just Mr. Winchester, just yep. name a few. He was always active in regards to making sure that everyone was involved in the total community. He had no, no prejudice bone in his body. Right, right. He, he constantly made sure that we all were involved in the process as far as policies were concerned mm -hmm. here in Portland. So for that, I'm, I'm very thankful mm -hmm. and uh, an honor. And to got his son it. very much involved. In very, very education. much involved. He's very truly much. an instrument too. Yes. Very proud of him and, and his daughter. Right. You know, and and his, his wife. His wife. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I, and I hope that, you know, Donnie will talk about the book, yes. you know, that yep. is out because uh, the book is a tremendous tool which describes a lot of things that you won't otherwise know about. Mm -hmm. uh, history is very important. And like yeah, Martin Luther King so. said many years ago, if we don't know our history, if we don't study our history, if we don't practice our history, we're doomed to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, talking about the book, I think, is a, a good lead in to Mr. Sweeney, who worked with Charles Jordan at Portland Parks, because, because of this wonderful book, I mm -hmm. was able to find out that, you know, Mr. Jordan started in parks in California. Parks and Recreation. And of course, when he came here, he came as head of the Model Cities right. program, which uh, involved a lot of other uh, community services and activities and, and programs. But uh, uh, his background initially was parks after, you know, going through the service, after uh, playing ball and getting his degree at Gonzaga right. and all this yeah. great stuff yeah. that I didn't know about him and uh and he so he ended up in parks mm -hmm. he started his career there and he ended up working with good people like mr sweeney john let me my charles you worked with him you worked for him you worked for him right you bet and uh <clears throat> when i first know him he uh, and met him he uh, he was the uh city commissioner and he was the uh, com uh parks commissioner and over the years there were several of the uh, people that were parks commissioners and you know, Frank Ivancy was a good park commissioner, and Mildred Schwab was a good park commissioner, and Charles Jordan. And when the guy up top or the gal up top cares about you way down the ladder, you feel it. Mm -hmm. And so he just felt that uh, it was important, and he, he would speak up for you. Uh, those people spoke up for us and, uh, and, and helped us out and, and had respect with the, the union and all that. And then, of course, um, he left to go to, to Texas. And then he came back and... Uh, Mike Lindbergh helped bring him back, I understand, is that correctly? Uh, yes, and uh, and one of the things is when he first got back, he uh, <clears throat> had an open door policy and to have people go in and present their ideas. And so I had some ideas and I went in and, and had probably about a 20 minute chat with him, you know, and, and uh, he asked a few questions and uh, uh, that was enjoyable, and, and several other occasions that uh, had uh, meetings with him. and Always talking to the troops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking with, mm -hmm. actually talking with the troops. Is right. actually talking more with the troops. Like it. So he, he was mentoring people and, and getting people to go up, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he was uh, not only the park commissioner, but the park, parks director uh, was really uh, beneficial because uh, the troops felt that he was for them, mm -hmm. so that their recreation and maintenance was working together, and they got them more together instead of being separate, you know, like the Marines mm -hmm. and the Army, they got mm -hmm. it together, so, you know, it's uh, one cause and, and uh, worked the program and uh, we said it, it was always enjoyable and mm -hmm. uh, one time we had a meeting about reorganization and, and myself and two of the parks foremen and a couple guys from uh, recreation met out at forestry and, and we talked with them and, uh, for an hour and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we laid out the, our plans and we... Uh, Made sure he had a pad to, to write on, and then all the stuff that we had gathered from basically June until late September. We had several meetings, and you're talking about 
people who had been with the uh, Portland Parks a minimum of 15 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he listened to us intently and asked questions and we'd kind of run across the grill, grill to get as much information as he could and then, uh, and it was very enjoyable. And Share, share the moment about uh, his being in the military, which you, you, you guys had a small chat about that piece. What, how did that come, yeah, about? Did that come about? The subject come up that he was in, because I had mentioned I was in, in the National Guard and I retired as a captain after starting as a uh, E-1 a long time ago. And, uh, and he was an infantry officer in a uh, uh, mortar platoon. And uh, he kind of sit back and you can see him think that, you know, reflecting back on how good that was. And I told him, I says, you know, you must be a pretty smart guy. You know, the direct fire is pretty easy to do, but, you know, you're doing indirect fires, it's kind of like art and science, you know. You, you really got to have a brain for it. Yeah, yeah. So he, he was a sharp guy in a, in a lot of ways. And, yeah. and like I said, he was uh, somebody that you talked with. You know, even if he was up conducting a meeting, it ran in such a way that it was, it was a pleasure. So, so yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, I just, I just remember his voice and his leadership. I mean, just a style of collaboration and cooperation mm -hmm. and you wanted to be part of whatever he was doing because he would just draw you in his karma was just extremely positive mm -hmm. I, I yeah. remember well i've heard him speak uh, a number of times and there were in different forums of course i heard him speak in city council as a, a, a commissioner i heard him speak at church at bethel and he could preach, preach. Oh, yeah. no, he could preach. And then on several occasions at our regional annual conference of blacks in government, he was a keynote wow. of a luncheon or other uh, type activity. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, he, he really represented Oregon well, because mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, blacks in government really started, I believe, in Seattle, mm -hmm. and it's a national organization. But this chapter in this region has been a, always been a very strong chapter, and always had a real fine. Uh, annual conference that, that really rivaled the national conference in many respects in terms of the quality of the speakers and so forth. So to have people like Charles Jordan be a keynote and give us motivation and direction and information mm -hmm. in his own special way was really very, very good. But he, he also, um, I know I knew him many years. I was not close with him, but uh, like with a lot of us, he always took the time to talk to you. He yeah. knew me by first name mm -hmm. and the work that I did in the community with the Urban League and other organizations, Red Cross, uh, United Way and so forth. Uh, and, you know, he was always there to give guidance if you had a question uh, and he was a very good listener and he, he had great ideas. But I think for me, the biggest thing was he was such a, a great role model and broke so many barriers. Mm -hmm. You know, to be the first African American city commissioner was a big deal. It was. It was, it was a big deal. To be the first black police commissioner yeah. was an even that, bigger that deal. deal. Yes, for it was. To give him that assignment yeah. Yeah. was really yeah. important, especially at that time when their police uh, community re relations may have been at, at an all-time low yeah. at, uh, after, during the positive incident and that yeah. kind of stuff. You remember that well. It was so <laughs> much more to him, too, uh, that you'll find from reading this book that I didn't know. Um, you know, I didn't know about his athleticism, for example, some of the personal things. I didn't know he played basketball. You would have thought maybe he'd be good at basketball, mm -hmm. but we can't make mm -hmm. can't an assumption it. that every tall person plays basketball. Mm -hmm. But he was a very good basketball player, both in high school and in college. And, but also the neat thing about that was to, to read the stories about them traveling and going to places where they couldn't be served and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff during the time that he was growing up. The segregation and things mm -hmm. that took place, even in desert California when they traveled. And uh, certainly in Texas in his earliest uh, part of his life, there was segregation there. And so, but he came out of a working family. He got all these good ethics uh, and he had good values, and he shared those, practiced those, passed them on to family, friends, and, and others in the community. And he knew how to work with people mm -hmm. when he came into this community. He didn't come into this community from California and just decide he knew everything. He came and listened to people and looked at programs that had been initiated and worked together with people to strengthen community services and programs to feed people, to get people housing, employment, and those kinds of things. The other thing, from my personal standpoint, 
uh, as a, a career human resources person and, and civil rights person, I, I had forgotten he was the first really human resources director for the mm. city of Portland. He went from kind of like an old style personnel yeah. to more of a modern human resources format when uh, Goldsmith tapped in to become that mm. first uh, director. So, and of course that's the bureau I retired from, from yeah, the city. Yeah, so yeah. I mean. You know, he initiated something that I ended up retiring from. Mm -hmm. So it, it touched me in sure. a special and a personal, professional way as far as that is concerned. So he, yeah, there's so much to the man that is in the book. And then mm -hmm. I, the other part of the book that I really like is that he um, talked a lot about his colleagues, you know, about Anna Street, about yeah, Michelle, Michelle Harper, Harper, who I've mm -hmm. known forever, and some of these folks that were just tremendous. Uh, support to him and team members of his uh, who were given the opportunity to go out and achieve and and they did and and our community is so much better for it the, you know the people that he loosed on the community mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. qualified exactly. young talented mm -hmm. people who worked throughout their careers to make contributions to the city and to our country you and know not, not to date ourselves but I think Donnie just made me think of another thing too YSOL Radio. Yes. Commissioner Jordan also was part of Model Cities at that time, which exactly. helped fund just around the corner here mm -hmm. and uh, from PCM. Right. And we spent time building that, that the station from scratch. Right. On the same support. block, we That's did right. a, a block station to demonstrate radio uh, and to train people. people. Really? Uh, Ken and I were part of that effort. And what happened with that was that we ended up moving to KQIV, where Roy J., yeah, who that. had trained in our program, but also had been over on his own in Vancouver. Uh, and we ended up working for him and I being on that 1,000, 100,000 watt quadraphonic station yes, quadraphonic. for a couple of <laughs> years. Yeah, that. <laughs> you know, that so that, that's where we come out of radio yeah, right, right. Uh, into television. And of course, Ken yeah, with right. uh, one of the local uh, NBC affiliates and so forth, and uh, but a lot of this, Jordan had his hands on a yeah, program yeah. or programs right. that helped us get things going and initiate things, and and it, and it contributed to who we are today. Yeah, and we're exactly. still doing the biggest tribute yes. uh, west of right. Atlanta for Dr. King right. 30 years later, right. simulcasting it on radio and television yeah. because. You yeah. know, Model Cities gave us a chance to do this demonstration mm -hmm. little radio project. Now, Bruce, you said that 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 you, 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 you're the oldest here, but I'm going to tell you, you're the seasoned, and I'm going to ask you to remind me because we have footage of Commissioner Jordan when he's speaking on the MLK program around dating <coughs> myself around 1986 or 87, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure we get you that footage mm -hmm. so he can speak his own words. I liked how you did Thank the last you. show Appreciate in regards that. to including. Yes. Yes. His, his comments Very much. You know, I might add that um, thinking about my involvement with him, I can remember as a Marine recruiter, that's how I came to Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I was assigned at this area also, too. In fact, I, I sort of asked that the uh, that my my uh, CO, commanding officer, uh, actually assigned me to the area to deal with some of the issues mm -hmm. with reference to young people who were going down to the, getting into the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was as a result of... Um, actually sitting down with Charles, and he also knew that there were some problems and some issues, mm -hmm. and what could we do? And I told him about a new program called the Espongement Program. I remember that. Remember that, the Espongement Program. Yeah. And so once I explained that to Charles, um, uh, he then basically communicated with the, some, of the, some of his folks at Mott Cities, mm -hmm. and they helped me put together an office. I mm -hmm. put together an office on Shaver and MLK. That's mm -hmm. where the murals are. I used to own that building. But, but we, that was an office. The idea was to have a military office there mm -hmm. of all the services. So to give young people an opportunity, if you will, to look at the service from an expungement standpoint. Yes. And, that, and, that, and just basically what that means is that a person would be, if a person had some problems, if you will, through the JTH, JDH or whatever, we'd go before the judge and the judge would look at the records. And then uh, based on those records and whatever, the judge would give us some consideration and would say, okay, fine, if you spend two years in the, in the service, whatever branch it is, uh, and you come back with honorable <coughs> discharge, they will just basically we'll clear, your record. Clear, clear your record. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it would give them an opportunity, if you will, to, to further their careers one way or the other. And Charles was very, very much involved in that process, and I spent many hours with him when he understood what that's yeah. all about. Well, I'm going to thank him, and I want to thank you, too, because 
Donnie knows we say this all the time. I hope he's not get bored of me saying it. You know, we're standing on the shoulders of not only of those who have passed on before us, we're standing on the shoulders of those who are among us. Mm -hmm. And I guess what thing, one of my personal, personal, thoughts is the fact that we have to pass this on to our young people mm -hmm. because I'm just looking around and hearing every day I know people like just this, this past week Cynthia um, 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 Cynthia Harris Harris no yeah. um, who just passed away uh, no I'm sorry Thomas Cynthia Thomas, Cynthia Cynthia Thomas, Thomas, Thomas yeah, who just passed away she's the daughter of Sheikh Thomas wow. who was another wow. icon another in this yeah, community yeah. Yeah. who and she was a young person who helped young people mm -hmm. at uh, Harriet Tubman mm -hmm. middle school and I'm, and I'm just uh, looking and seeing how many of us are still around we need to make sure that we are passing this on like Charles Jordan did for us mm -hmm. uh, and and make sure we're preparing our students to be able to 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 to, to, to follow leadership and be able to give leadership and also you know I used to say this all the time that there's a follower there's a there's a there's an observer there's a participant there's distractors and mm -hmm. we, we got to stop all that and mm -hmm. just focus exactly. on those things that are exactly. positive exactly. and that will lead us down the, the path because we don't know how much longer any of us going to be here mm -hmm. and I heard the word this morning in church talking about we are stewards yeah Right. Here on the, on the on this on this road, and and we have to do what we can to provide and pass on to our young people. So well, I want to thank you guys too, both of you, because the World Arts Foundation is a very very important piece within within the, the city for the state for that matter. Because often people are trying to get that history, mm -hmm. if you will, and you you guys are doing an event on an on, ongoing. We've been there. How many years you've been doing that event? We're going on 30 years, and we're working years. on archiving. We have 30 years worth of documentation wow. that we're wow. That's uh, expanding. We hope to have an announcement coming out shortly mm -hmm. about what we're trying to do to preserve that right. into the permanent archives and organ and history. So, uh, we're working with the Oregon Historical Society and some other um, uh, in entities to try to make sure. That and we hopefully, the PCM that. will continue to gather this. And, and as mm -hmm. I indicated to you, can uh, uh, you know, hopefully, you can use this this piece right here on a once a month basis. You know, you guys well, continue Portland to Community something. Media has been an important part of the growth of our programs mm -hmm. at uh, World Arts Foundation mm -hmm. Incorporated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we hope to continue to work with them. A lot of great men and women here who uh, do a great community service as mm -hmm. far as broadcasting things that are important mm -hmm. to the community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're thankful we, for that. We're very thankful. But we want to have, a, under respect, I think they need a consistency, mm -hmm. uh, consistency of time. You know what I mean? So if it's once a month type situation, they would know where, hey, I'm going to be able to get that history mm -hmm. and get that current. So like you, know, you say, you talk about you need, you need to know your past if you're going to be going to your future, right, or whatever. And so, uh, again, thanks again for, for doing that. And anything I can do up to this particular point, I'd be more than glad to do that, please. Well, one of the things we're trying to do, like like uh, Mr. Sweeney here even, we're trying to make sure that we're interviewing people, documenting people. Yeah. And another one of my kind of personal you know, desires is to is to try to encourage families mm -hmm. to take advantage and documenting their, 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 their families yes, while we get live, so. while we're alive, okay? Yes, yes. Rather than waiting, because there's too many people, again, going back to, to Cynthia just uh, passing this week, is that, you know, we want to make sure we're documenting everyone's history, and but we have to do that individually as much as we can, so mm -hmm. that we make sure our history is not lost, stolen, or strayed, mm -hmm. as they use that mm -hmm. cliche sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the thing, problems with our present education system is they're not teaching uh, American education or, uh, or American history or local history, and that's I remember when I was went through the eighth grade, they taught teach, uh, state history. It was kind of at that level, was kind of uh, uh, you know not very detailed. But sure. the deal is to give you a history of your state so that you mm -hmm. understand it and get. And when you talk about different things in your presentation, so you get an appreciation of history. So it's <coughs> important. So the deal is when you relive history, you, li you relive the worst part of it, not the best part. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, on that same note, you know. Uh, Inclusion is so important. You know, we, we, we constantly are sort of like bogged in this whole issue of race. Mm -hmm. and it keeps coming on day in and day in and day out, and there's no opportunity for inclusion. Mm -hmm. And I might add that in Oregon, it's my understanding, and I'm going to do a little bit more research on that, it's my understanding that the legislature passed a piece on culture to be taught into the schools, public schools. You know, my African American, you know history of, of, quote, all the cultures, if you will. But it passed, mm -hmm. but they've not enforced it. They've not put it in the classroom. I had had the opportunity to meet with former Governor Ted Ted Kulangoski, mm -hmm. and I brought up the issue with him. He said, "Yes, Bruce, that's a fact, but it, it's not in the. They, they've not enforced it." And oh. his suggestion was to send it to Kitzhopper. Sure. Governor you know, Kitzhopper said, "Okay, fine. This needs to be done, and hopefully, you know, in all due respect, former former Senator Margaret Carter and Abel Gordley and folks like that, they were there doing that. And uh, 
And so I think it's important that maybe we need content. It's like anything else. We've got to work together. Yeah, it has to. It has to. It has to, to me, is a collaboration. Yes. And you have to, the wheel that squeaks is the one that gets yes, the oil. Exactly. You know, and, and we have to make sure that rather than becoming complacent, those yes. things that we want, if we're really concerned right. about passing it on to our young people yeah. and making sure our young people have the tools that they need, and not just the basics, but a wide range, cultural included, and the arts, mm -hmm. uh, we have to really speak up to that fact and make it known. And also, um, bring folks together, committees, or and 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 going to the powers to be and making our concerns. I think it's very important. I'm, I'm, I'm still reminded. You okay, right. Yeah. <coughs> I'm still reminded me, of doing those early days when we, you know, we had a, mm -hmm. we really had no one elected from the community per mm -hmm. se, mm -hmm. and uh, we made the effort, if you will, to come up with a with, with a uh, a legislative district where a number of the residents happened to be uh, be African Americans. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened I'd been the I was the owner of the Portland Observer at the time, I remember and that. basically led the charge on that piece. In fact, uh, uh, Ron Herndon was all part of the deal. He and I basically ran down to the legislature and, and worked with the legislature uh, to give us that that give us that piece, if you will. And it ended up we did have that. And as you note, know, that the name the first person elected from the district was Ed Leak, mm -hmm. and that. because we were having the issues of who was going to be the first person. And uh, I can say that there's a lot of history there because uh, uh -huh. in, the, in, the, in the second round, we were still trying to figure out who's who. And I, I must admit, uh, the, the women in the, in, the, in the city were a little bit more assertive. Uh, I'm talking about uh, uh, Gretchen Kafori, mm -hmm. uh, Vera Katz and others, but they, they were kind of doing their thing. It was kind of a, their effort. You know, they raised, opened up the city club, um, but they were very active during that particular time. And they picked up Margaret. And he picked up Margaret, he got her a job with even artist that, that laid D. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in all due respect, uh, she then won the piece, and she's been there. She had been there for a number of years. Okay. And I'm I'm just I guess the point I'm making is that, um, and I and I, today I can make that statement. Uh, the the moment we get leaders, they're picked up, and then we the, the whole effort of what we were trying to do was gone. Okay. So we never really had any entities to, that would actually work on some of the concerns of the community because when I think about in all due respect I think about um, Winters and I think about uh, Margaret and I think about Evel they were on ways and means and things of that nature and you ask yourself the question you know you know what ways and means oh yeah that's where the so, budget so a lot is. of the issues that were that were uh, uh, that were in need if you will of dollars and whatever were not actually come to this area so and it's not again you know, nothing negative about the, the women and whatever but the bottom line is that uh, we need to start understanding what's going on because we got to go through a progression. We're going through progression. We, you know, it, it's time, and that's why I'm so I'm, I'm so glad we're bringing this issue up with with Charles because Charles was there. He he was the person right. that was thinking about that. And I'm also reminded about the fact that many times you hear, that, and I commend uh, John for for running, and I commend you for running for an, an, a seat because the wheel that squeaks is the one that gets the oil. But yeah. he's going to be part of the problem. Or part of the solution, and it, that, that does take time. It takes mm -hmm. commitment. I mean, I know it's not easy oh, it's running not easy. for no. any type of no. office. No. And I commend all of you for doing it because it's a noble mm -hmm. uh, opportunity, but mm -hmm. also a challenging opportunity yeah. too. Because, you know, different opinions and different uh, things that you have to deal with on a daily basis. I commend you for doing that, and I wish you the very best, both of you. Well, thank all of us for that. Man. Yeah, all of you. Yeah, we, yeah. we wouldn't be who we are if it yeah. wasn't for you guys like well, you too. <laughs> yeah, well, it's our pleasure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it's our honor. Any other lasting thoughts here? We got maybe the announcement about the fact that uh, there's going to be a. I mean, let's let's maybe get the announcement so people have their head on. Well, I just want to remind people: memorial. May 17th, there'll be another remembrance for uh, Charles Jordan, Charles Ray Jordan, who passed uh, April 4th, and that'll be at the Charles Jordan Community Center called Parks and Recreation City Portland. Uh, for more information, okay. you can call the center directly, Charles Jordan Community Center. And they can pick up a, a, maybe a book. Copy, maybe a, of, copy of this book. book. They'll also have information about where you can purchase the book as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And if you're on Facebook, Dion Jordan, his son, yes. is also friend him. And all the information is there on his, his own website as well. Yeah. 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 His website. And as you know, the last time we, we had this chat, we were talking about putting together a memorial. I thought it was something that would be more befitting, mm -hmm. not knocking the park naming it, but, but something that would be a little bit more renowned mm -hmm. because the, uh, the, uh, the Pioneer Courthouse Square was kind of like the living room of Portland. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be able to, to have him there, in some way, whether it be a bust or something of that nature, mm -hmm. where folks who are coming outside, we're a tourism kind of a state, mm -hmm. a city where that people tend to go there 
there's all these conversations and Charles was that kind of an emulation. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to continue to pursue that, you know, hopefully. We can may I also mention the fact I'm going to commend uh, uh, yourself, thank you for your support, and also Teresa Rayford yeah, from Teresa, the yes, point of, so. of doing the Boys and Girls Aid um, uh, ceremony last week, acknowledging the 25th anniversary of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, plus the Northeast. Yeah, of the renaming of the street. The, street. the renaming of the street. And you went to the Boys and Girls Club, too. That's the other thing. Right, you made a quick right, note of that. Right. We, we wanted to make sure the Boys and Girls Club got credit and also that they were recognized because mm -hmm. they needed some help over there as well. That's a major concern. Right. And that, again, you know, with the Blazers the way they are at this point in time, they, they need the funding, if you will, because. I was part of that team, well, if you will, that okay. we did, uh, Blazers identified, and that, that's their responsibility. But I'm hearing some things are going to be coming that Good. way. They will and be. also, we had a tr uh, flag-raising ceremony, because the right. flag was pretty raggedy. It was. <laughs> and yeah, so, okay. we had a Native American presentation to bring oh, the, 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 the spirits and the good. blessings. Good. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Of, of that, and it turned out really well last week. It really good. did. So, maybe we might do a little presentation, kind of I'll make get some folks aware. We'll get some footage for you in the future shows. Okay, good. Well, all right, folks, what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come up with the next half hour. Again, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. You're very well. Take a short break. Be right back. Thank you. Thank you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. I remember two years ago when Mr. Rousseau was running for an office, we had him at our potluck. And uh, he told us that he had, was going to do something like this. And you know, I think we have so many politicians who tell you what's going to happen if they get elected. He didn't get elected and he did it. So if he had a... <laughs> If he hadn't got elected, he might have did bigger things. So next time he runs for office, let's elect him and see what he will do. Again, folks, welcome back again. And I'm Bruce Broussard. Uh, and I've uh, got with me today... Uh, the Republican Party here in Multnomah County, Jeff Reynolds, and I thought it would be fair to, to make sure we bring the chair over here and and just talk about uh, about all, basically the state of affair, if you will, mm -hmm. of folks who are running for office within this particular area and within the state, for that matter. And I thought it'd be very. And by the way, we've given it equal opportunity to to the Democrats. Well, they can come on themselves too, and I've invited everybody. But but I think it's very very important that we we get a feel for how how uh, folks who are 
and it, it's not an easy job, if you will, signing up. Jeff? No, you know what? And, and um, I actually have that as the introduction on our Facebook page that, okay. you know, uh, Portland talks a lot about diversity, but rarely is it about diversity of thought. And, right. and that's what we're trying to do is mm -hmm. to, to give voice to people who don't toe the liberal line and, mm -hmm. and want to see change and want to see a difference. And we're mm -hmm. doing the best we can. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's talk about this. Talk about some of the ones that you were, you were kind of interested in and some of the... Well, you mean besides your race, yeah, right? Right, right, right. right. We, we can talk about yeah, yeah. We'll talk yeah. about mine. <laughs> now, and I'll give a disclaimer because I am working on a campaign. Good, no I'm, I'm uh, okay. uh, working on a campaign in the fifth congressional district. Ben Pollock is mm -hmm. running in a contested primary against Tootie Smith for the Republican nomination. I'm okay. working with Ben, and um, uh, so that obviously I'm, I'm recommending uh, Ben as the uh, nominee in right. the fifth district. Right. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, the the. Um, the Senate race has really uh, caused, you know, taken up a lot of right. energy and ink and, and uh, debate and all of that. Uh, looks like Monica Webby has a, a significant fundraising lead, uh, should be the nominee, although uh, uh, Jason Conger is giving it a spirited fight. Uh, but uh, I think in the end, his... Um, uh, his fundraising will probably handicap him, and, and mm -hmm. uh, he won't be able to overcome Monica. That's just my prognostication. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's a, actually in that Senate race another one of the candidates is a, a gentleman by the name of Mark Callahan, and he was all over the news the past couple of days because the video surfaced of his Willamette Week uh, endorsement interview, where uh, he called out Nigel Jaquis for uh, when, when uh, Joe, yeah, yeah yeah when when Joe Ray Perkins was uh, giving an answer to a question, uh, Nigel Jaquis Jaquis was writing blah, 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 blah as his notes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Mark Callahan got up and, and confronted him and said, you know, uh, that's that's lazy. That's, you know, that's uncalled for. This is a serious business and, and all of that. And uh, the Willamette Week reporters responded by telling him there's the door. Really? So, yeah. So uh, that made a lot of national news. A lot of, uh, you know, the video finally was put, published on the website. A lot of uh, uh, center-right blogs picked that up and, you know, pointed that out as, Exhibit A on uh, liberal bias in in hmm. uh, the in in the news. And, now they can see that, right? I mean, that can just go to the web. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in uh, fact, uh, the, how do you, how do we go to that? Well, uh, it's it's all over Facebook. Uh, there, uh, the the specific clip has been cut down because it's like an hour and right, a half right, long right, in, right, uh, right. video. So if you go to the right scoop dot com, uh, they were the first ones to put just that little clip up, and then okay. a whole bunch of other people picked it okay. up. Okay. But so. if they wanted to see the whole hour, so they yeah, that's at the there. Willamette Week the website. But they actually see because they videotape yes. that whole piece. Yep, I was, yep. I was you know, it's interesting you made that, that point about uh, they did video this piece, and, and I'm not just bringing mine particularly, but I'm yeah. thinking about um, uh, once they've gone through the endorsement aspect of it, mm -hmm. and uh, I can remember something that happened to me in that same kind of a setting. I walked in uh, with, uh, you see, with my gear and whatever mm -hmm. on, and, and I had my Marine Corps jacket on, yep. and I had, because I was working that day. And uh, at Norma's Kitchen, and I had my my um, uh, my shirt on. Yeah. You know, and so I walked in, and uh, the, the reporters, two of them were there. They said, "Well, you can't come in." I said, "What do you mean?" They said, "Well, you got that earpiece, you know, your phone in your ear and all." I said, "Well, gee whiz, my wife is, is has a hip replacement, and so she, you know, she'd have to be able to contact me if there's an emergency, or whatever." Yeah. And the guy said, "No, you can't come in." <laughs> and uh, there was no there was no effort, if you will, to say, "Well, look, I tell you what, we'll make an arrangement." Uh, We'll tell the desk clerk to uh, give her, call her up, give her the number, and blah blah blah, and mm -hmm. we'll call her call. And uh, so then I, I went. He, they didn't do that, so I walked out, made those adjustments, and then came back into the room. And and that was a that was a problem with that piece. The other thing was that uh, when they were when they videoed it. They kept me out of the video. Did they really? They kept me. They out didn't of the even video. show you. They kept me out of even the video. though you were there sitting I was answering there questions. Right there. They had. They, wow. They, kept, they put the other. I didn't know that part. On this That's end. crazy. So, so you. Man, can, I, and I gotta, I, I gotta tell you, there's a lot to say about the endorsement process yeah. that's gone yeah. on this year. It's been such an incumbent protection racket mm -hmm. on all sides. On you know, on the right side, on the left side, in the news. Uh, you know, my my favorite part about this, we were just talking about this before we came on air, but uh, you know, all these news newspapers 
reporters come out and talk about who has the best shot of right. uh, winning the Republican nomination and who they, they right. recommend as mm -hmm. uh, representing conservative values. Mm -hmm. These reporters wouldn't know conservative values if they jumped exactly. up and bid them. Exactly. You know, who are they to say exactly. who the, the person is that has the best conservative values? Mm -hmm. These guys are uh, almost exclusively mm -hmm. registered Democrat. They're, mm -hmm. They all show liberal bias. The mm -hmm. editorial boards are clearly mm -hmm. uh, biased liberally. Oh, so, so, yeah, it, it, the idea that, that newspapers still hold that kind of sway to say, well, we know what's best to, uh, and who represents conservatism mm -hmm. best, mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense to me. No, I agree with you. In fact, I'm on that same point that you made, on your point, I'm just going to give you a piece. There's a paragraph here talking about the whole issue of the interview at the Willamette Week. Mm. And listen to this. And it says, during our endorsement interview, Willamette Week, Broussard, a perennial candidate, voiced only vague, empty complaints complaints against Smith and Rayford seem barely awake as if she was sleeping. That's insulting. <laughs> it is insulting. It's, it's totally it, it's, insulting. And, and, well, you know, you, the, the thing with Mark Callahan, again, uh, Mark actually was interviewed by Fox and Friends on the Fox News Channel this mm. morning because of this whole blow-up. Okay. And uh, so they, after he uh, called them out for um, writing blah, blah, blah in their notes, he asked them, uh, or he was asked, uh, what's your uh, take on global warming, myth or reality? And he said myth. And then uh, Jake was follows up with a uh, question, and what's your take on the Easter Bunny? You know, mm -hmm. it's just uh, completely insulting. Okay. You know, it, obviously they're not, and they went out and did a follow up article and, and explained, you know, to their credit, yeah, we're 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 biased. We're not going to hide it, and you know, we're we're we don't agree with these people and all of that, which was commendable because obviously we all know that's the case. Mm -hmm. But at least show some uh, respect for the yeah. process, even if you don't agree with the person's politics. Uh, have some respect for the process, and that's that's what really bugs me about this whole thing. And you know, if I work with candidates in the future, I'll think long and hard uh, yeah. before even allowing them yeah, to why, go why to the Willamette yeah, yeah, Week. Exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, or any of them. Yeah, I mean, that's I, a good point. I yeah. mean, anyway, I, I was thinking on that same point that you were talking about. I was thinking about the Portland Tribune. Yeah. You know, again, uh, I was up in Cully. We were uh, we were given an opportunity to speak before the Neighborhood Association mm -hmm. aspect of it, and Jim Redden was there. Oh yeah, you know, and I've been knowing Jim, I know Jim for a long time, and yeah, he's a decent reporter. Yeah, he is, and yeah. I've known yeah. his dad, who was a former Marine. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he was part of the expungement program that I was, I was oh, in the Marine okay. Corps. Yeah. See what I'm saying? But the bottom line is that I was wearing my gear mm -hmm. right there in the front of the whole deal, and I recognized vets because that's part of my platform: the vets, the senior citizens, and and the kids. Mm -hmm. And but the, but the thing is, is that. I made my platform. That was my platform. Yeah. Jim was there. He made a comment in the tri Tribune. Mm -hmm. But when they came out with the endorsement, they, they, they basically went back to the whole issue of uh, Baruti, Arturi. Oh, yeah. You know I mean? yeah. And said that, that, uh, that he had basically put together with, with, with myself and Teresa Redford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all about this bashing on Smith. Oh, not God. talking to the issue. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That was not the case. And and even even more legitimate uh, newspapers than the Willamette Week, uh, you look at the St Salem Statesman Journal. And I, I have uh, personal examples here because I'm working with one of the candidates. Mm -hmm. But Ben Pollock in the 5th District mm -hmm. had his bio completely uh, mangled by the Statesman Journal when they did their endorsement. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't get anything right. Uh, and here in the yeah. Oregonian, Oregonian, we were just today, talking about today's this. Today's Oregonian. Yeah, uh, U.S. Congress. In the, in the 1st District and the 5th District, they no have no recommendation. And that, that's that's irresponsible. Jesus, uh, yeah. You know, uh, at least give a reason why. I mean, uh, the, in the 5th District, you have two very solid candidates who are uh, running very, very hard races, and the, the Oregonian is uh, uh, falling asleep at the switch. And then James Bugle, you know, he's sure he's, he's unopposed, but the fact right. of the matter is, he's a very viable. I've had him on the show several sure. times. Yeah, for he's obvious no, reasons he's about no the chump. CRC. Yeah, yeah it, come, it, come the river crossing. Yeah, you know, got me. And that guy can talk too. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. <laughs> he, he gives a good stump yeah, speech. He, I'll he give knows, him that. <laughs> he was on the show with Monica the other day. You yeah, know what I'm saying? On no, James is great. Yeah, and, James. and to to completely ignore him is, yeah. is irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. But you know that's typical. I mean they they don't want to give any voice to somebody they think is an, a legitimate threat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, the same thing with House District Number Forty Four with Tina Kotek. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we all know about the Columbia River Cross. Sure. The boondoggle, you know, yeah. two hundred million bucks, and yep. and we all know Light about know yeah, the first district, and and uh, uh, was it uh, Congressman Earl Blumenau who's mm -hmm. looking like a don? I don't know if you've seen the, <laughs> those commercials, you know. I you have, know, but you know. I mean, it looks like a don. You know, he got yeah. a two or three million dollar house. I mean, the settings, if you will, mm -hmm. but yet and still, uh, the only thing I can remember about him to date is the fact that Markraft was was one of his staff people mm -hmm. who picked up a million bucks. A million bucks. Well, and how, how many millions cost. of dollars has uh, Blumenauer made since he got into Congress, oh, too? Multi-millionaire. Yeah, sure. Multi-millionaire. 
you know, so so I mean, my point is that that's it's not fair not to, to basically give at least James the opportunity. Yeah, he was on the and poll, in, on the it, Republican it, side. This is not endorsing it, anybody, right? It's yeah, obviously he's un, uh, unopposed. It, so, unopposed, you know, right. yeah. Uh, but but in the in the first district too, you've got two uh, very solid candidates right. as well, Delinda right. Morgan and Jason Yates. Exactly. Uh, Jason has been all over the district. I, I know personally he's been he's been all over the place. And Delinda has Same run thing. a yeah. couple of times yeah. now, and and you know uh, she's taken another crack at it, and she's just as viable yeah. and just yeah. as uh, active. So um, it, to to diss these active candidates like this is really irresponsible. Only because they're Republicans. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what what do we do about something like this? I mean, the idea is that we've got to talk to the people because to give to give them the opportunity mm -hmm. to to look at the uh, well, I think I think maybe one of the uh, opportunities would be the uh, voters guide, right? When sure, absolutely, and that's that would, that's how most people vote anyway is yeah. is off the voters' pamphlet statement, the right? So right. Uh, so you got to put something solid in there. If I were to put my campaign consultant right. cap on and right. and uh, give advice, it would be, yeah, you need to you need to get out there, you need to raise money, you need mm -hmm. to be able to get your message exactly. out. I'm thinking, you know, any more these days, uh, endorsements in general are getting less and less valuable, yeah, right. whether it's the newspaper, whether it's single issue groups right. who have compromised themselves in the process this year and in years past by only selectively endorsing mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. based on whether or not they're going to get favors back mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, whether the person agrees with them principle. Mm -hmm. That's That's been a rampant problem and it got it got way worse this year. So I think the, the whole endorsement idea is is less and less... Uh, of an issue, and and really, what you need to do is the grassroots stuff. You need to do the the retail politicking. You go out, you knock doors, you make phone calls, you send letters, you you mail uh, pieces out to the district, mm -hmm. and you have events, and you get to know as many of the constituents one on one as mm -hmm. you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And that means you need to get early, get started early, 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 and you need to work hard. You make this your full time job, mm -hmm. and if you do that, you have a much more uh, much more legitimate chance, and you have mm -hmm. a much more legitimate connection. Mm -hmm. To the voters of, of whatever district you're running for. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that because, in all due respect, uh, even with my I've been around enough in this business. Yeah, people know who Bruce Broussard yeah. is. Yeah, but when you say <laughs> even even I, even though they, they know who I am, mm -hmm. in all due respect, I'm running against uh, the sitting senator. Yeah, uh, Ron White. You That's know, right. And, and mm -hmm. this guy, he happens to be, and I've known him for a number of years and worked with him, if mm -hmm. you will, on Great Panthers and this, that, and the other. Sure. And the fact that he's Ways and Means Chair, mm -hmm. and I don't want to get rid of him. That's right. That's <laughs> Especially right. for Oregon, we want to keep him. That's right. <laughs> for Ways yeah. and Means, right? Yeah. And and but at the same time, at least for time, a couple of years, maybe you, in a couple of years when right. he's up for re-election. Right. We'll but the bottom line, how do you run against a sit sitting senator like him? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't weigh. I mean, I don't have the kind of dollars, and and so as a result of that, the media then takes it from the standpoint. And Loretta, I, I like Loretta. I've known mm -hmm. Loretta for a number of years. That's right. But the fact of the matter is, that's her whole campaign. Yeah. Uh, 22 years working for Senator Wyden, yeah. if you will. You got mm -hmm. my point? Mm -hmm. Even though I worked with him. But my point is, it's just Wyden and Wyden and Wyden, and they just take that. Yeah. And they say, so why even call me? Why, why even call me for an endorsement or, or these get these gatherings? Right. I got nothing out of these gatherings whatsoever. You know, and, and to be honest, I think you'd make more, uh, you'd get yourself more earned media if you uh, went out with a press release refusing to go to the endorsement interview, saying, yeah, exactly. you know, the, the process is rigged, it's not fair, yeah. you don't have anybody from the Republican side that knows how to even ask a, yeah. a legitimate question yeah. on the issues. Mm -hmm. So why would we, uh, why would we participate in something that's designed to tear mm -hmm. us down? Well, maybe that's, that'd be a good thing next next yeah. time around, meaning that we can maybe do a little demo there you go. in the front of the Oregonian. Yep. Well, I'm maybe we could buy ad community. space and, yeah, and well, say, no, I would, didn't participate in this uh, it, because. Exactly. You know, yeah. exactly. But then, you know, here, here's, here's a couple of guys. That, again, the same thing, the Oregonian aspect of in terms of the endorsement, Fish and Salzman. Okay? Yeah. And both of these guys I've talked with, I talked with about mm -hmm. coming on the show. Mm -hmm. Is there no way? Really? No way are they interested well, in coming two on the, the show to meet the other candidates that are running and share <coughs> with the public about the issues yeah. facing the city. Yeah. That's what we should do. Absolutely. And and this whole idea, you know, that, um, I know in, in the 5th District, uh, Ben Pollock has repeatedly asked Tootie Smith to debate, and right, she's right. declined every okay. uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, you know... It, that's again. It's just a disservice to the voters that mm -hmm. you don't you don't get the opportunity to compare and contrast mm -hmm. um, with Nick Fish and Dan Saltzman. I I can't think of two less effective mm -hmm. city commissioners. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are these guys doing? You know, I mean, what, what's what's the what's the point of endorsing them? I, what accomplishments do they have to build on? Gee. Well, I mean, uh, at least Nick Fish has the water bureau. Everybody yeah. loves the water bureau, right? <laughs> I can't even think of what Dan Saltzman's done. 
<laughs> well, I, I can say it's really a sad note that uh, it's a, because they're wearing two hats. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. Two hats. They're sitting. They're sitting city council person, and also they're running for office. Right. And they don't take the. They, they, they use both of those hats at the same time. Sure. Aspect of it. And so now the people are a little afraid because they're either working for them or this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so important uh, to the to the public because you think when you think about it, the public have no knowledge, if you will, right, of what they've done. And our journalists are lazy more often right. than not. They yeah. they don't report the issues. Luckily, you know, for instance, with the with the Cover Oregon fiasco, at least somebody in at uh, K two News got got the bug and and started digging and and. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncovered a treasure trove, uh, you know that forced the Oregonian to cover it. The Oregonian was trying uh, consciously to bury that problem, mm -hmm. and uh, they they were they were basically shamed into covering it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, that's that's what we as you know as, as Republicans, as activists, as candidates. Right. I mean, it, it all it all ties together. It's all part of the same process, yeah. and we have to you know continually put that pressure on to make sure that uh, uh, they're not resting on their laurels and, and actually doing something that you know but, doing their job. But you know, Jeff, in all due respect, these are very important mediums. You know, what I mean, they're supposed mm -hmm. to be representing the people, if you will. Sure. And you're just sharing what are the issues. Well, because and that's are, why that's they why play a major are, role. They play a major role. And that's why blogs. Are, are taking over, uh, mm -hmm. not taking over, but they're okay. they're they're gaining more and more traction every day in in their influence because mm -hmm. the the mainstream media refuses to cover stuff. They mm -hmm. have a selection bias in their editorial process that mm -hmm. they won't cover certain issues. Mm -hmm. Oregon Tea Party is a is a classic yeah, example yeah, of that. Yeah. You know, so. Um, it, it, that's when that's when we as citizens can can use our own power and and actually uh, exert pressure on on the 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 centers of power and, mm -hmm. and make them respond to us. That's the way it's supposed to be. But it, it shouldn't shouldn't have to be such a struggle for common ordinary citizens right. to actually right. uh, get people right. to respond. Right. You know. Well, I remember I remember what maybe maybe oh, about maybe five or six months ago or so we had both you mm -hmm. you the chair of the Multnomah County. Republican Party, and we had the Democratic chair, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and we had a decent conversation. Absolutely, we were it, talking it, about issues and back and forth sure. and whatever, and what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think we need to maybe do more of that. I agree. I think I, mean, I think that you know if we can sit down and actually have a respectful conversation right. between all of us, right. that's right. that's all that's better for for everybody. It, exactly. When you try to shut out people just because you have a difference of opinion mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. that's where uh, democracy starts failing. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the thoughts about? You know, let's say, for instance, prior to, if you will, uh, the formal uh, election process, that the media at least identify the issues across the board in terms of where we've been, well, the monies we spent on where we've been, what we what we've not accomplished, what we have accomplished, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and what are, what are the future problems that we're having, and and then share that with the public at large. Before, if you will, the you know that's a, that's an interesting idea, and I had that that idea for the the party as well. I mean, what what can we effectively do as leaders in the Republican Party? Right, right. What what can the party apparatus do to help our candidates and to help the voters in general? And one of the things I thought of is you know down the road here when it's not election season, we really need to put this model together. But we we should really start talking about doing our own polling, doing our own focus group stuff, doing our own uh, uh, opinion gathering and data gathering so that we know what what our voters are really thinking and what, what's of concern to them so that we can then present a slate of candidates that respond to that instead of telling them what they think they should think. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, uh, you know, these, these uh, national talking points and these national consultants and, and all of this stuff that, that comes to Oregon and doesn't really connect with the Oregon voter, that's why so many people tune out. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't get involved in the process because mm -hmm. they don't think they can have an effect on the system. They don't think that the system responds to their mm -hmm. basic needs. You make a good point. Then, then another piece is that, in doing, doing, as you as you know, when one files a run for office, uh, it's kind of like the the sixty second kind of a deal solve yeah. the problem. Yeah. How in the world are you going to solve a problem in 60 seconds? That's right. You know? well, that's uh, why my term is four years long. You, know? <laughs> I mean, you got reporters asking you, well, let's talk about the budget. Okay. Well, I'm looking at them and say, well, gee whiz, I mean, the first thing I'd do, I'd do the audit. I don't know. Show me the money. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, you know, well, look at well, the budget but, first. But I'm yeah. asking you, well, well, what do you know? <laughs> but the, but my point is, and I'm making the point is that I noticed that there was in the uh, Portland Observer newspaper, uh, there, was a there was a response. They were, they were basically covering one of the so-called gathering, hmm. and they, they had a photo of um, of uh, 
of Smith and Teresa Redford, Teresa Redford, mm -hmm. and Smith in the article from them had made the point about the fact talking about the park, mm. about budgeting the park, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And but what they didn't understand was that it parks doesn't come under Multnomah County. Right. But it was put in the paper. Well, and neither does Ma uh, the, a, neither does the Portland Public Schools budget. But that's you, all that Jim Francisconi is talking you, about, you right? What I'm saying? <laughs> See, so so the thing is, but but the fact of the matter is, they're getting these things because in all this respect, they, they will basically take the Oregonian. Many folks will take the Oregonian mm -hmm. with their ballots. Yep. Side by side. Yep. And they're endorsed, but they'll just click it off accordingly. Yep, that's right. It's really a sad note. So as a result, that we're, they're not really getting the full story. That's exactly right, and that's See? that's, and and again, we talk about uh, the electorate, the the voters, the citizens out there. Exactly. They're not they're not exactly. as involved exactly. as they need to be, and exactly. I don't blame them a bit for for tuning out exactly. because we're, you know none of us are giving them enough uh, of a, a, a real message. To, to go on. You yes, know, yes. So. Because imagine, you know, just setting the deal on the side, you got the deal, and they come up to the U.S. Congress, Republican primary, first district, no recommendation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, you know, well. give me a great Republican <laughs> primary, fifth district, no recommendation. Yeah. You know, so they just... Seriously, I mean, and I, I know for a fact in that fifth district interview, there was a lot of meat in that interview. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <laughs> they, also, they also told the candidates that uh, they weren't videotaping the interviews. That, which they have never done before. Mm -hmm. They they always videotape those interviews. They always at least get audio of them. And somehow uh, it, it just they turned out. It. They well, they it was the day that uh, uh, for whatever reason they didn't have any cameras mm -hmm. or something like that. So mm -hmm. some something fishy was going on there anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again that, that same point. I, I on your point, you're right. They videoted it at the Willamette Week, and I purposely, as opposed to wearing the suit and sure. tie routine, mm -hmm. I purposely were. Uh, visuals, if you will, well, so they could see what right. I'm doing. That's free speech, isn't you know it? That's the First yeah, Amendment. Yeah, but the point is, they didn't understand what the visuals were. Well, and and they, you know, <laughs> so they printed just the opposite. Yeah. And I kept telling them about this is my this is my platform for veterans, for seniors, for youth. Right. But 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 all of a sudden, it's just basically the guys this this that and the other. You know, mm -hmm. saying? that was the endorsement I got from them. Right. Well, and that that's the equivalent of the blah 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 moment, right? Is uh, here's Bruce Broussard, and yeah, we'll just right. write whatever we think right, about right, him, and right. you know, none of his answers matter. So I wonder, those ten years I spent in the Marine Corps, what did I spend them for? Well, you know, <laughs> not you, for the uh, Willamette Week. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I realize they may have their own attitude and their own views about the military and whatever, but without that military, without that participation that I participated in, Absolutely. and many others, if you will. I mean, you get the respect from some of the other folks about thanks for serving and whatever. But I tell you, it's, it's really a sad note when you've got folks out here that are doing this kind of stuff that I fought for. And, and, and I'll tell you, uh, there are more people in Portland and Multnomah County that agree with you and, and that appreciate what you've done and appreciate the military than what the Willamette Week yeah, uh, yeah. reflects. So. But it's their representation. Right? Yeah. And, and, and I, I happen to know the publisher, you know, but the fact that he hires these people. Mm -hmm. But, but when, I was, when I had the Portland Observer newspaper, I when when they went through that election process, I had to sign off, yeah. if you will, in oh, terms absolutely. of what, what yeah. the process was going to be, and sure. I think that was a fair way of doing it. But I don't, I don't know about this now. I mean, I think about the Oregonian. I, I even think about they've got their own. They had their own voters pamphlet, if you will, real quick. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. They had their own voters pamphlet, and uh, they, they went through about three different series of folks uh, along that particular line. And uh, the bottom line is, and they weren't talking to one another. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. So anyway, we got a problem, but I think we can have a solution. Right? I think so too. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, I guess we're at this point now, right? We're at this point. And again, thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Maybe we'll have some more candidates here. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank All you right. very much, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, bye.